Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to be going live. So I'm gonna be launching a live class and there's gonna be quite a few moving parts to this particular um, tutorial. The first part will be going live and showing you some of the settings uh, that you can set up for your live class. Uh, and in the second part, we're going to be uh, viewing it as a, an attendee, so as one of your students. Okay, so let's just have a bit of a recap of what we've covered so far. Um, over the um, previous tutorials, we have set up a live class and a live webinar. We have invited students and or prospects to live class and live webinar. Now we're gonna launch it. So now we're actually going to go live, okay? In future tutorials, we will be going into more uh, advanced details, more advanced settings. But for now, this is gonna be a little bit different and it'll probably be a longer tutorial uh, than usual. So of course, just pause, come back, make some notes. Um, but I do want to cover some of the settings and exactly what happens um, as a host when you go live, um, but also, as I said, as an attendee. So here we are within your admin side under the live section. Uh, we've got the live class, it's due to start in around about seven minutes. So I have invited an attendee and that attendee is also me and I will be joining in on another um, computer in the second part of this tutorial. So let's get this going. Let's start the live class and the live session will automatically end 15 minutes after the set duration. Okay, so let's start. So here we are, as you would normally experience through Zoom. There's all sorts of different applications. You need to launch it all. And this is why it's so important to do so much um, testing because Zoom are always doing different uh, downloads. You need to download new software, updates and stuff like that. So it's really important to give yourself as much time um, and, and preparation prior to going on any live class or webinar. So here I am, the camera comes straight up. I'm gonna turn that camera off. I'm gonna join with my computer audio. And as always, my name comes up as Mart. Okay, so um, you can hear me. Okay, so let's start with the um, audio settings. So here we are, we've got the mute, I can mute. And I can unmute. Here are some of the further settings. So select a microphone. I am currently using a Yeti. Okay, so Yeti stereo microphone. However, you may be using uh, headphones, you might not be using anything at all. All of this stuff you can set up through your microphone settings. Okay, so built in microphone would be if I wasn't using my Yeti. So, speaker um, again, Yeti stereo microphone, uh, built in output, same as system. All of these sort of settings you can <clears throat> set up as your preferences on your system. And again, test, test, test. So test speaker or microphone, switch to phone audio, all of these sorts of things are, are pretty standard. The audio settings, you can test it here. The volume can go up and down, speakers. Again, all pretty standard, but all of the sort of things that you need to test several times before going live so you are completely happy with it. Um, here you've got the video, and of course you can turn it on. Hi. Or you can turn it off. You have the settings here. So I've currently got the FaceTime, the normal uh, Mac um, camera built in. Uh, I've also got uh, the Brio the cameras and stuff like that, which I tend to use for my videos, um, which again is just a USB. I would click that into my computer and that option would come here as well. So it'd be uh, a Brio um, HD 1080p or whatever it is, and I can press on that. Um, you can also go for virtual backgrounds, so you can upload different backgrounds. You can have behind you green screens, all of that kind of stuff. Um, I don't have anything set up right now. Uh, it's not needed for me, but you can personalize it as much as you like. Uh, and the video settings, much like the audio, um, you can enable HD and you can change and edit that to your preferences. Okay, so here, so what I'm gonna be doing for my live class is I want to enable a waiting room. So I wanna give myself uh, as much time as possible to test out the camera, uh, to test out the audio and all of that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna enable the waiting room, okay? So the security, once um, we get going and uh, I've got people, at, uh, all of my students are in, I've got five different students, 10, 15, 25, it really doesn't matter. I want the ability to lock my meeting. So no rogue attendees can join my meeting. So that's just what the lock meeting means. 
Here is where it gets a bit more bespoke. And this is what you can allow, uh, you can either enable or disable for your uh, attendees or your p participants to be able to utilize. Now for me, if I was doing a live class um, with a lot of in interaction or engagement, I would be more open to my attendees being way more engaged than what I would probably if I was doing a webinar where I would have full control myself. So you have the access here to um, allow attendees to share their screen or you can turn it off. Um, to chat, to rename themselves, and to unmute themselves. Now, if it were me, and um, certainly to get going, I wouldn't want them probably to unmute themselves. But in the same in the same part, if there's just five students I've got on a call and there is a lot of engagement, and I want them to introduce themselves, then again, maybe I would allow my participants to unmute themselves. But this is again what you can control from your dashboard here um, within your live class. Again, all of this is pretty straightforward. Participant uh, is me, uh, is Mart, um, and I can rename myself. Uh, I've got the invite link. I can mute all of my people. Um, from this setting here, I could mute participants upon entry, which is what I would personally do. But again, if I've just got a small class setting, probably isn't relevant. Um, you have the option to allow participants to unmute themselves. Play sound when someone joins or leaves. Personally, for me, that drives me absolutely bonkers. Um, so I would absolutely turn that off. I wouldn't want the chime sound whenever anyone is entering or, or exiting. Um, again, lock meeting, straightforward, absolutely. Um, this is a chat box where you can um, communicate, you can chat with your attendees, and you can also send files, and you can also send messages to individual people or individual attendees which you would see when you have more than just one um, attendee. Um, share screen, this is really important. Um, so here you can see we've got the desktop, um, which is if I was sharing my slides, then I'd be sharing the screen here. Um, you need to authorize all of this with your um, account here before going live um, and possibly restart it as well. So again, give yourself plenty of time when you're doing this. The, the whiteboard option um, is, is pretty good for uh, those of you who are teachers and you've got your um, students and stuff here. So when you've got the whiteboard, uh, you can write stuff in, you can doodle, you can add all sorts of bits and pieces, so text. Um, Hi there, uh, you can draw uh, different lines, um, spotlight, you can stamp. Uh, so let's just draw a wiggly line, hi. So you can do all of this sort of stuff uh, from your whiteboard. Stop that share. Now the recording is really important to note because right now you can only record on your computer. Okay, you can't record to cloud. So you would need to record to your local uh, computer or your local desktop. Now the breakout rooms, uh, we're gonna be covering in more detail in future tutorials. Um, but in essence, you've got the um, option here of allowing different uh, breakout rooms, which people tend to do towards the end of their classes. So if they've got maybe 10 people on a call, they might do uh, multiple, or let's say 12 people on a call, they do multiple, four different groups of three, uh, and the host can actually um, spend time within those particular breakout rooms. Um, it's, it's a really useful uh, resource and feature there. And reactions, uh, this is where um, you can give thumbs up and claps and all of that kind of stuff. Um, you've got more enhanced encryption. So this is important for all of your security stuff. Um, again, there isn't really, to my knowledge, a great deal you need to be here, but it just, especially recently, Zoom have really updated all of their security features um, so that you can't get Zoom bombed, I think it's called, where people can hijack. Um, but in, in essence, this is this is what you have, okay? So when you go live, you've got the option of obviously muting, unmuting yourself, exactly the same for your attendees. On camera, off camera, you can allow your attendees to be on camera, to be off camera, um, and uh, you can share your screen, you can whiteboard, you can record it to your computer. Um, you have a waiting room, so you can test all of your features before going live. Um, you can also allow people individually in from the waiting room and you can connect with them. You can make them um, host along with you. Uh, you have so many different options here at your disposal. Um, but for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this particular part of the tutorial and I'm going to go on to the other 
computer and I'm going to log in as the attendee. Okay, so here I am. I am the attendee just about to join my live class. So here I am. I'm going to join the live class. Again, it's always really useful to let all of your attendees know um, that uh, they need to download Zoom and all of that kind of stuff. So you can just see my camera is covered um, and I'm going to turn off the video. So here I am. So as uh, in the earlier part of a tutorial, I set up a waiting room. OK, so here I am on my other computer wanting to join the meeting. And as it says, me, it's obviously multiple me, me, the host. I've got the waiting room and me, the attendee. I'm like, come on, let me in. So as so on my. So as in the presenter on my screen, it now shows two attendees. So I've got one in meeting and I've got one waiting. I'm going to allow, as a presenter, I'm going to admit me, which will now prompt me as a, an attendee the ability to join the call. Okay, so I'm going to turn off my video and get rid of that pink thing. But here I am joined with computer audio, so I've got Mart and I've got Martin Hickey, which is perfect. Um, as the attendee, you can see I've got the option to be mute or unmuted, so me as an attendee had loud myself to join in unmuted, which is fine, absolutely perfect. Um, I have the ability to be on camera or off camera. As an attendee, you can see I've got two attendees, Martin Hickey as in me and Mart the host. So again here, mute, unmute, I can rename myself, all of these sort of things we covered in the earlier tutorial. I have the option here to chat. Hi Mart, so I can send that to me on the other one as in the host um, share screen option so I've allowed myself the option to share screen so as you can see as an attendee here uh, I've got access to everything that I need to be able to watch you as a presenter and join in as in the fully fledged kind of engaged live class um, so as we've alluded to over previous tutorials this is such a powerful resource as far as teaching, training, engaging, connecting, recording, selling, um, so many different um, paradigms here at your disposal as a presenter, as in being the host, and in as being a student um, enrolled in one of your courses and or a prospect um, within one of your webinars. So I'm really hoping this tutorial has given you a bit more of an in-depth overview of setting up a live class and webinar. Um, inviting and of course going live as a host and a presenter and also what it's like going in as an attendee. Now the webinar feature is pretty much a carbon copy of exactly what we have here as in the live classes. The main difference is that they don't need to be enrolled in one of your courses. They can sign up via um, just a link with a name and an email address but all of the security, the waiting rooms, um, the breakout rooms, all of that kind of stuff is, is pretty much exactly the same. So as I always say, make sure to test, test, test before going live with any of your live classes or webinars.